the root of the divergence <laughs> between the Federal Reserve and the market's outlooks on rates are sharply differing views on how and if inflation comes down. Let's bring in CNBC senior economics reporter Steve Leesman, maybe with a little bit of good news on inflation-ish. I, I think this is potentially good news. What you have, uh, uh, Brian, is essentially you're saying, you know, uh, one side is right, one side is wrong. You've got this large gap in the outlook for the funds rate between the Fed and the market. And you can explain it by differences on where each is, uh, thinks inflation is going and even on where they think it is right now. And that's the important part. And some think the Fed is looking at it the wrong way and about to make a big mistake by raising rates too much. Mike England of Action Economics points out our own view is that the Fed has toggled from one view to another, from transitory and they were pretty adamant about that to a 1970s view, you guys were just talking about it, of entrenched inflation. The key to the market view, looking at the relatively benign inflation of the past five months and annualizing that rather than using the year over year, which incorporates a lot of bad inflation from a year ago. Here's the five month annualized data. Uh, so 7.1 percent is the year over year for the headline, 6 percent for the core. But the last five months. Headline's been 2.5% because of the big decline in energy prices. The core is still high, but better than it looks uh, if you just look at the year over year, 4.7%. Fed Chair Jay Powell, almost certainly aware of these calculations, but he continues to harp on with this hawkish view on the subset of the inflation data, the service sector, X housing, where prices are driven mostly by wages, Powell believes. He also thinks wages won't come down until the labor market loosens up. That's why he thinks it's further down the road that inflation happens. The result... A Fed that sees the funds rate as high as 5.12, staying there, a market that's built in rate cuts and sees rates ending the year at 438. A part of the gap, the market also building in a strong chance of recession, such that it sees the Fed fixing its transitory mistake with a worse mistake of raising too far and holding for too long. So, and Brian, one thing to think about is if inflation, underlying inflation is indeed lower, which would be the good news I offer you, it also means that real rates are higher and the Fed is exerting more restraint on the economy earlier than perhaps it thought. But isn't the problem, and Joe kind of alluded to this in the stock market perspective, basically stocks will go up and they'll go down and we will react accordingly. I think those well said. Because I think, Steve, ultimately we're not going to know if the Fed really screwed up until probably a couple months or quarters after they screwed up, right? I mean, if the, if the fuse is lit, the fire won't start for a while. How soon would we know? I think that's right. I mean, the way to get the contemporary view of what's happening is to listen to these earnings reports and kind of fold that in against the data. That's how I do it for what it's worth, Brian. I'm sure your panelists have a view on that. But, you know, one company's earnings report is not uh, evidence or data. It's a piece of the anecdotes that you need to build a case. And so when we listen to uh, uh, what FedEx is doing to try to maintain essentially its profit margins is how I listen to what they're saying. Um, you want to figure out how widespread that is. Only the data can tell you that. But if there's a lot of FedExes out there laying off people, uh, cutting back on, biz on, on, on CapEx, it's something you really want to watch for. That's how you get into a recession. And you can pretty much get a feel for that on a contemporary basis. Joe, I think you got a question. Jump on in here. I sure do. Steve, if you account for the quantitative tightening in 2023, what's the Fed funds rate look like at that point? Well, it depends on how much you do. I just read an analysis. Somebody thinks the $400 billion we've worked off is worth another 50 basis points. Um, you know, there's various estimates out there, but um, I, I think you're right, Joe, to point out that that is going on as well. And what's a little unclear to me, and I listen to every word the Fed says, is how much they're incorporating that into their sense of tightening. So, they have the, uh, the rate hikes, and they also have the QT, and that is going apace, and I don't think they're going to change that. Um, the, the, there's a slight sort of technical aspect to this, uh, Joe, which is there's a lot of money sloshing around as a result of all the uh, quantitative easing the Federal Reserve did. So there's a point at which people believe the QT becomes what's called binding, and that is has an impact mm. on the market. Okay. We may not be there yet, Joe. The, 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 the part that's come off may be kind of frothy, and, and that's why I think your question is a good one, because you're asking about 2023. I think next year is when QT becomes binding. That is, has an effect on liquidity in the market. That's a good question and a better answer. And, and uh, Steve, I know you got a really fascinating segment coming up tomorrow. We'll look forward to that. Steve Leesman on inflation.